Well, how you doing? Welcome back. It's uh, Infinite Jeff, the project where I read to you the book Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace, published originally in 1996. I read it to you one page at a time, one day at a time. My name is Jeff, Infinite Jeff. I put it on the internet. It's what I do. It's my thing. It's going strong for a couple months now. We are on to page one. Hunt eh. Five. That's right. Triple digits. Still, still happy with that. So, here we go. 105, Infinite Jeff. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Ask a Stice, who's well known for asking how high, sir, when shit says jump. Now feeling at the carpet around him for something to throw at Freer. Ingersoll tosses Stice a wopsed up towel, trying to be helpful, but Stice's eyes are on Freer's in the glass, and the towel hits him in the head and sits there on his head. The room's emotions seem to be inverting themselves every couple seconds. There's half cruel laughter as Stice, at Stice as Hal struggles to his feet, rising in careful stages, putting most of his weight on the good ankle. Hal's towel falls off as he does his combination. Struck says something that's lost in the roar of a high pressure toilet. And we have a section break. The feminized American stood at a slight angle to Morath upon the outcropping. He stared at the dusk shadow they were now inside, and the well, and as well the increasingly complicated twinkle of the USA City Tucson, seemingly slackly transformed, transfixed. Steeply, in a way, vistas too large for the eyes to contain transfixed persons in a kind of torpid spectation. Morath scenes on the edge of sleep. Even the voice of Steeply has a different timbre inside the shadow. They say it's a great, maybe even timeless love, Rod Tynes for your Luria person. Morath grunted, shifting slightly in the chair. Steeply said, The sort that gets sung about, the kind people die for, and then get immortalized in song. You got your ballads, your operas, Tristan and Isolade, Lancelot and what's-her-name, Agamemnon and Helen, Dante and Beatrice. Marath's drowsy smile continued upward to become a wince. Narcissus and Echo, Kierkegaard and Regina, Kafka and that poor girl afraid to go to the post box for the mail. Interesting choice of example here, the mailbox, steeply pretended to chuckle. Marath came alert. Take off your wig and be shitting inside it, Hugh Steeply BSS. And the ignorance of you appalls me. Agamemnon had no relation with this queen. Mene Menelaus was husband, him of Sparta. And you mean Paris. Helen and Paris. He of Troy. Steeply seemed amused in the idiotic way. Paris and Hela, the face that launched vessels, the horse, the gift which was not a gift, the anonymous gift brought to the door, the sack of Troy from inside. Marath rose slightly on his stumps in the chair, showing some emotions at this steeply. I am seated here appalled at the naivete of history of your nation. Paris and Helen were the excuse of the war. All the Greek states, in addition to the Sparta of Menelaus, Menelaus attacked Troy because Troy controlled... We'll find out more tomorrow. That was page 105 of Infinite Jest. I love you and good night, everybody.